Doctor Who is in The Hobbit. <laughs> I'm just going to be doing a few things while I talk about talk about the new Hobbit movie. Elijah Wood comes in for a cameo, which is pretty awesome. Bilbo's writing his book, and they have a little interaction there, and it, it uh, works really good for getting the story moving. The next thing I want to talk about is the high frame rate. It looks different. I heard a lot of people complaining online that... Um, it made people's hands look like they were moving super fast. I didn't notice about the accelerated like hand movements or anything like that that I read about. Um, but uh, it just takes a minute to get used to. Now, me and my daughter both said we felt something. About 20 minutes in, we both started feeling real funny. So, uh, luckily, I think we got used to it, and that went away pretty quickly. Some of the dwarves just looked just silly. The leader of the dwarves, Thorin... He looked very heroic, very normal, like like you would expect a dwarf to look. When they're in in the Hobbit hole and they're eating all of Bilbo's food, um, they start cleaning up and they start singing the song from the book. When you read that originally, you know you use your own imagination, and this whole scene actually makes sense in your head. You know you can imagine it, but when somebody makes a literal interpretation of it well, Peter Jackson's version of it anyway, it just looks silly. I mean, these plates are just flying around just ignoring the laws of physics. Another thing I didn't like is they had a lot of toilet humor. I mean, that's where it took over the movie or anything, and I, I didn't appreciate that either. What I had originally heard is that they're running out of franchises, and uh, Twilight, Twilight's over, Harry Potter's over, the Lord of the Rings trilogy is over, and they, they don't have any new franchises. So what was originally planned to be a, a two movie deal for The Hobbit they uh, the, the studio encouraged P Peter Jackson to stretch it out to be three movies Peter Jackson now has to stretch these movies right this whole scene where Thorin is fighting an orc leader he picks up he picks up this oak stump okay and it has a, a little branch coming off of it he grabs it in this big oak stump and he uses it as, as a shield basically against this orc king whose name is azog azog himself plays a huge role in the rest of the movie azog who looks like a huge i don't know bodybuilder like lou ferrigno from the 70s thorin cuts off azog's arm they lost so many people they had a retreat they never they never took back uh Casa doom when they're traveling through the misty mountains um there's this scene where we actually get to see the stone giants fighting and the dwarves the dwarven party is actually trapped on the knee of one of these stone giants that was a spectacular scene from there they quickly found shelter they get trapped by the orcs in the misty mountain which did happen in the book the next thing they added to it was radagast now if i remember right radagast was only ever briefly mentioned in the books and I think he was only mentioned in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. Radagast comes on the screen and it's Sylvester McCoy from Doctor Who. He was the, the seventh incarnation of Doctor Who and I, I was fine with that um, except it kind of took me out of the movie because I, I knew who he was and the first time I saw him he was Doctor Who and I, I, I like Sylvester McCoy as Doctor Who. I know a lot of people don't like him as Doctor Who but I really I really do like Sylvester McCoy as Doctor Who. He uh, lives in the woods talks to the talks to the animals and he starts off by him fretting over some you know some slime and stuff he's found in the forest eventually he gets trapped in his in his uh, I don't know what you want to call it his hut or his hovel by these giant spiders the dwarves and Bilbo eventually get caught by the spiders so that, that, that kind of sets that up after the spiders go away and start leaving him alone he hops into a, a sled that's drawn by these giant rabbits which I mean again that's kind of silly kind of pandering to the children but I mean it was okay I mean it wasn't too bad I, I kind of accept that I, I mean I I guess I kind of have to if I'm going to accept Radagast at all because he wasn't in the re original story Radagast actually sees the necromancer and gets attacked by one of the ring wraiths um, and he gets one of his uh, the wraith drops his morgul blade and he, and he picks it up and he eventually uses it for proof to show um, Gandalf what's going on in the, in the South Tower. None of this is ever covered 
uh, in the book. I mean, they allude to Gandalf having to leave the party at one point to go deal with the, the evil in the South or the threat in the South. And that is <laughs> all that is really mentioned in The Hobbit. So he eventually meets up with Gandalf and the dwarves and shows, shows him this blade as proof. And immediately after, Azog and the wolves find them and they start running. Radagast gets in his sled with his, with his rabbits and uh, Gandalf says something about, you know, you're going to get caught by the wargs. Um, and he's like, not with these rabbits. Then he starts zipping across the field after uh, Gandalf uh, and the party leave uh, leave Rivendell. Azog tracks them down again, and now Azog has trapped them in the forest, and they run up the trees like they did in the book, but they weren't trapped by Azog and the wargs. It was just the wargs that chased them up the tree. And in the book, Bilbo eventually had to climb to the top of the tree and see what was out there, and Gandalf eventually called the eagles, and they the eagles came and picked him off, and they flew off. In the movie, it's inflated to this big battle scene with Azog and, and the orcs, uh, in the in the wargs. It winds up with Thorin getting up heroically and striding down the striding down the trunk of the tree, that, which has which has been toppled and is hanging over a cliff at this point. They're all dangling off of a cliff off this tree. Walks up to Azog, and everybody backs off. They realize this is a mano a mano fight, and they just back off, and they start duking it out. And Azog just starts beating him bloody, and eventually uh, Bilbo gets involved and saves Thorne's life. I'm not a big fan of Azog. Uh, Radagast, I'm not a big fan of Radagast. The stone giants were freaking awesome. The high frame rate was eh. The dwarves looking silly really kind of took me out of it. The, uh, the toilet humor. But overall, the parts that actually did cover the original story were really good. Uh, Elijah Wood being in there was really good. And um, the Stone Giants were my favorite parts. Um, so overall, good stuff. I really enjoyed the movie. A few things I didn't like. Um, and uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>